the topic which we are going to see today is front of the thigh in which the muscles and fascia of the anterior compartment or the front of the thigh will be given much importance. So let's get into the topic. So the objectives of today's class are the surface landmarks of the uh, thigh, the superficial fascia of the thigh, I mean the anterior compartment of the thigh and its content, the deep fascia of the thigh and its modification, the compartments of the thigh and the muscles of the anterior compartment. So first we have the surface landmarks. Okay. So the important surface landmark of the thigh is the anterior superior iliac spine which is present over here and the pubic tubercle which should be present over here. So both these are connected by the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament is connected, I mean the inguinal ligament's attachment will be the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. Okay, medium to this pubic tubercle, we have a point called the pubic symphysis. Here we have two points. Okay, one is the, yeah, one is the midpoint of the inguinal ligament which when we break the word we can say that the it is the mid point of the inguinal ligament so the it is the uh, point in between the anterior superior iliac spine in the uh, exact uh, midpoint of the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle the other point we have is the mid inguinal okay mid inguinal point what is that it is the point in between the pubic symphysis and the anterior superior iliac spine. Other than, other than that, we have the patella here, we have the tibial tuberosity here, we have the medial mandibus here. Yeah. So next, the bones of the lower limb, it's the femur, the bone of the thigh, and the bones of the legs are tibia and fibula, of which tibia is present medially and fibula is present laterally. So next, we have the superficial fascia. Okay, so the superficial fascia of the thigh is divided into two layers. Okay, it's the thick superficial fatty layer and the thin deep membranous layer. As we can see, this is very similar to the superficial fascia of the anterior abdominal wall, right? So these both uh, moves or courses upward and continuous with the anterior abdominal wall. Next, we have hold its line. Look at what is hold its line. The line of fusion of the membranous layer of the superficial fascia to the fascia lata or the deep fascia of the thigh. Okay, so this membranous layer uh, is the thin layer that fuses with the super uh, fascia lata. Okay, so that line is called the hold its line, which corresponds to the crease of the thigh. So that is the point where we can move our thigh okay so that is the point of movement in between the hip and the thigh as we can see here this is the crease of the thigh or the hold and spine where the membranous layer of the superficial fascia is attached to the deep fascia now the contents of the superficial fascia we have four contents those are cutaneous nerves cutaneous arteries and then termination of the saphenous vein and the superficial inguinal lymph nodes so first is the cutaneous nerve. Where are these derived from? These are derived from the lumbar plexus. Okay, what are the nerves? Or the, what are the cutaneous nerves that supply the anterior compartment of the thigh? They are the iliotic vinyl nerve, femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve, lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, intermediate cutaneous nerve of the thigh, medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Okay, now we'll see. First, we have the ilio inguinal nerve here. Okay, it supplies the upper medial part of the thigh. It also supplies the base of the penis and the anterior one third of the scrotum in case of males. Okay, in case of females, it supplies the mons pubis and the anterior part of the labia majora. Next, uh, the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve supplies the skin over the femoral triangle okay okay here the ilio inguinal nerve here right so this is the superficial inguinal ring so the ilio inguinal ring, uh, nerve emerges through the superficial inguinal uh, so ilio inguinal nerve emerges through this superficial inguinal ring next 
we have these laser cutaneous nerve of the thigh whose nerve root value is L2, L3, which supplies the anterior lateral part of the thigh. Next, we have the intermediate and the medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. So this is the intermediate, these are the intermediate and this is the medial cutaneous nerve of thigh, which supplies the anterior region, okay, anterior region of the thigh completely, okay. So the uh, mid anterior region is supplied by the intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh, whereas the uh, medial part of the anterior region of thigh is supplied by the medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. Okay, here we have a nerve called the obturator. What is the supply? We supply the lower medial part of the thigh. Okay. Next, we have a nerve here called the saphenous nerve. Okay. So, whose branch here is called the intrapetalar branch that supplies the uh, region inferior to the patella. Now, we'll see about the cutaneous arteries. We have three arteries, three cutaneous arteries. One is the superficial epigastric. Okay. And the other is the superficial external uh, circumflex ilia, yeah. The other is the uh, superficial external, sorry, superficial circumflex ilia, and this is the super, uh, superficial external pleurentum. So all these three are branches of the femoral artery, and these arise below the inguinal ligament, okay. These are accompanied by its own tributaries. Now, let's see the great saphenous pain. So the great saphenous pain arises in the medial part of the dorsum of the foot, it goes upward and it is being trained into the femoral vein. It arches over here and it trains into the femoral vein. Before that, it pierces a structure or fascia called the cribriform fascia. Okay. So this before piercing into the cribriform fascia or before draining into the femoral vein, the superficial uh, sorry great saphenous vein. Uh, I mean the great saphenous vein receives three tributaries. What are they? Those are the uh, tributaries, I mean those are the veins that corresponds to the cutaneous artery. So those are the superficial epigastric, superficial circumflex iliac and the superficial external pudental from here. Next we have the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Okay. Uh, so the superficial inguinal lymph nodes is of P shape as you can see here and it's of two groups. One is the horizontal group and the other is the vertical group. So the horizontal group can further be divided into medial and lateral. Uh, so there will be around five to six uh, lymph nodes in the horizontal group and the vertical group lies in close relation with the uh, terminating part of the great saphenous vein. Now let's see about the deep fascia. So this deep fascia is also called the fascia lata. So let's split the word. Lata means in late in its latest which corresponds to broad. Since this deep fascia covers a very broad region of the thigh, it's called fascia lata. What's the attachment? So it has a superior and inferior attachment again. Okay. So inferiorly it is attached to the capsule of the knee over here. What is its attachment superior? Here it uh, attaches to the anterior superior iliac uh, spine, inguinal ligament, it will be tubercle, okay? Here laterally to the iliac wrist and posteriorly to the sacrum coccyx, sacrotibus ligament, okay? Yeah. Now we have some modifications of this deep fascia. One is the iliotibial tract and the other is the saphenous opening. So we'll see them. So this iliotibial tract, okay. So this iliotibial tract is uh, it's a wide thickening in the lateral part of the deep fascia. So it's around two inches in width, okay. And uh, coursing upward, this iliotibial tract is divided into two lamina, a superficial lamina and a deep lamina. So in between these two lamina are two muscles. So these lamina encloses two muscles. What are they? One is the tensor fascia lata, which is the anterior muscle of the anterior compartment. The other is the gluteus maximus, okay. The superficial lamina is attached to the iliac crest, whereas the deep lamina is attached to the uh, capsule of the joint. Why is it inserted? It is inserted here in the, uh, to the lateral condyle of the tibia, okay. Where in the lateral condyle, in the anterior part, there will be a smooth region. So it is inserted into a smooth region in the anterior part of the lateral condyle of the tibia. Okay, what's the action of this iliotibial tract? So this iliotibial tract stabilizes, okay, stabilizes us in a bent position. So when we bend our knee and stand, we are not falling down. We are not falling down forward uh, because of gravity, right? So that is only because of this iliotibial tract. The next is the saphenous opening, which is present over here. So as its name indicates, it uh, it uh, it okay, it helps in the draining of the or it helps in opening of the saphenous vein into the femoral. 
Okay, so the Sabina's uh, opening has some uh, well defined lower margin or inferior margin and an ill defined medial margin. So the Sabina's opening is being covered by a lid like structure called the cribriform fascia, which we saw here near that the Sabina's brain uh, used to pierce the cribriform fascia and drains into the femoral vein, right? So this cribriform fascia, why is it called cribriform? Because it has many mesh sleeve like pores, okay? That indicates that many structures are being drained. Uh, which pierces the fascia, so that causes its pores. Okay, so what are the structures that drain or open into the saphenous opening? One is the great saphenous vein, and the other is the tributaries that uh, uh, enter. I mean, uh, that enter the great saphenous vein before draining into the femoral vein. What are the superficial epigastric and superficial circumflex iliac? Right. The other thing is the inguinal superficial inguinal lymphoids, which are present over here, here, and here. Okay. Now let's see the uh, compartment of the thigh. So the uh, fascia later gives three septas that results in uh, three compartments of the thigh. Okay, so the thigh is divided into anterior compartment, posterior compartment, and medial compartment. In which anterior compartment is also called the extensor compartment. The posterior compartment is called the uh, flexor compartment, and the medial compartment is called the adductor compartment. So we are going to focus mainly on the anterior compartment. So anterior compartment consists of uh, a major group of muscle called the quadriceps muscle. So as its name indicates, the quadriceps femoris. Okay. So the quadriceps muscle has four muscles. Okay. It's uh, not a single muscle, but it's a group of four muscles. What are they? One is the rectus femoris. The other is the vastus lateralis. The other is the vastus intermedius, and the other is the vastus medium. So all these four correspond to the quadriceps muscle. Which whose tendons are condensed together and that results in the formation of ligamentum patelli. Okay, what are the other muscles? We have articularis genu, which is said to be a discontinued part of the vastus intermedius. The other is a sartorius muscle, which is the longest muscle of the body, and the other is the tensor facial matter. So now let's see the muscles one by one. First is the rectus femoris muscle. So the rectus femoris muscle have two heads, okay? One is the superficial head and the, I mean the straight head and the other one is the deep head. So the straight head arises from the anterior inferior iliac spine, not the anterior superior iliac spine. See here, this is the anterior superior iliac spine. Below that, we have the anterior inferior iliac spine, okay? So this rectus femoris originates from the anterior inferior iliac spine. The straight head, okay, straight head originates from the anterior inferior iliac spine. That is this reflected red arise from it rises from the uh, a little above the groove of the acetabula. So since it arises as two origin, it must have two bellies, right? So these bellies fuse together here and is inserted into the base of the patella. What is its now supply? All the muscles of this anterior compartment is supplied by the posterior division of the femoral nerve. Okay, it's same for everything, and the action is also exactly, I mean almost same. It is the extensor of the knee. Added to that, this rectus femoris is the flexor of the hip. Since this rectus femoris is extensively used in kicking action, it's also called the kicking muscle. Now, the next muscle is the vastus lateralis. So, before going to that, I think that this vastus lateralis and vastus medialis share a very common and opposite features. Okay, so let's see. So, first, let's see about the origin. Okay. So what do we have here? This is the greater trochanter over here. We'll have the gluteal tuberosity here in which the gluteus muscle is inserted. And this is called the intertrochantric line, okay? Now, let's say the origin of both vastus lateralis and medialis next to next, okay? So let's see them side by side. So it will be very easy for you to correlate. So the origin of the vastus lateralis is the upper one third of the intertrochantric line, okay? And the anterior inferior greater trochanter. Now let's see the vastus medialis. It's the lower one third of the intertrochanteric line. Okay, yeah, see upper and lower. Now, next from the gluteal tuberosity, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, linea aspera over here. Okay, so the linea aspera has two lips. One is the lateral lip and the other is the medial lip. So this vastus lateralis arises from the, I mean, originates from the upper one third of the lateral lip of the vastus, uh, sorry, linea aspera. What about the vastus medialis here? It arises from the medial two third, okay, medial lip of the linea aspera, where the up, uh, lower two third of the medial lip of the linea aspera corresponds to the origin of the vastus medialis. Added to that, we also have 
the supracondylar line here. Okay, so, so that also corresponds to the origin of the vastus medius. The insertion too is also very similar. This is inserted into the lateral part of the patella. It is inserted below laterally to the patella. That is, this is inserted into the medial. Uh, this corresponds to the medial part of the patella. Now, the division uh, nerve supply is obviously the posterior division of the femoral nerve, and it will act as the extension of the knee. The same here. But a nerve, particularly called the nerve to vastus medialis, which is also a division of posterior division of femoral nerve ultimately, but the nerve to vastus medialis supplies the vastus medialis muscle here. And the action is obviously the extension of the knee, as all these muscles are present in the extensor compartment. Now, vastus intermedius. So, this muscle is present in between the vastus lateralis and vastus medialis, hence the name vastus intermedius. So, the origin is from the uh, shaft of the femur. So, where it's from the lower three fourth of the shaft of the femur. Yeah, has it inserted? It is inserted below the patella over here. Okay. Now, the nerve supply is obviously the posterior division of the femoral nerve. And the action is the extension of the knee joint. Okay, now let's see the relation with these three muscles. See, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and vastus intermedius. So this part is said to be a detached part, and that uh, leads uh, corresponds to the articularis gene muscle. So see, the next muscle here is the articularis gene muscle. So what is its origin? Its origin is from the lower part of the shaft, anterior part of the shaft of the femur. And where is it inserted? It is inserted into the capsule of the uh, knee joint. Okay. What is nerve supply? It's obviously the posterior division of the femoral nerve, and the action is the extension of the knee joint. Okay. Next, we have the sartorius muscle, which is the longest muscle. Okay. So the sartorius muscle crosses from the lateral to the medial aspect. Okay. So the origin is from the anterior superior iliac spine, and the insert. So it crosses. Okay, it crosses. From the lateral to the medial side, and it is inserted into the posterior part of the tibia. Okay, uh, I mean medial condyle, which is uh, I mean posterior to the medial condyle of the tibia. That exactly. So it is related with the gristulous muscle and semitendinous or semimembranous muscle. Okay. Okay. The action is it helps in flexion of the knee joint and hip joint. Okay. The nerve supply is obviously the posterior division of the femoral nerve over here. Next is the tensor facial lata muscle. So this is a short, thick muscle which is present over here in the river tail region. Okay. So this muscle originates here in the iliac crest. Where exactly in the iliac crest? It uh, from the ASIS anterior superior iliac spine. For, from, uh, when we close it backward, we have the iliac tubercle over here, which is the highest point of the iliac crest, right? So, in between these two points lies the origin of the tensor facial lata, okay, and it is inserted here, okay, it is inserted into the iliotibial tract, okay, we saw you earlier that the iliotibial tract encloses two muscles, so one was tensor facial lata, so this tensor facial lata is inserted into the iliotibial tract, the action is exactly the same of the iliotibial tract added to that, it helps in the abduction of the hip joint. So the nerve supply here will be the superior gluteal nerve. So this is the only muscle that have a different nerve supply. It's the superior gluteal nerve. Okay. That completes the anterior compartment of the thigh muscles. Thank you.